Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Well, I've showed up again. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm exhausted. I'm hot and cold. I'm tired. I feel like, ugh, like you don't get enough sleep and then you kind of feel like nauseous almost because you're like felt like you had pulled an all-nighter like at a party but like you just realized you're too old to do that yeah that was me (laughs) so it is really so draining to worry about someone to such an extreme level and then I just kind of feel like I have this anxiety now because it's like hit me it's hit me that my mom was hit by a car and just that's something that is hard to wrap your mind around, um, you know, just kind of blunt impact trauma. Like you, it's just like my brain kind of like, ugh, can't get over it. Um, so, and I just know how lucky she is. And you know, if you missed yesterday's episode, I I meant I tell you all about it yesterday in eighty four. Today we're eighty five. So, I mean, new energy today. So much to do like wow I have so much to do today because generally you know I take it easy I don't do too much and not only do I have my house chores that I've piled up um homeschool that you know has not yeah wasn't on the top of the list yesterday that's for sure um and then I have to help take care of my sister you know and um because my mom usually does that And then I got to get the stuff ready for my mom and make sure, you know, it's just this and that, but it ain't no big deal. I'll get it done. I'm choosing to get it done. I'm choosing. That's what you have to say when you don't, when you don't want to do something or like, you don't feel like you can, I'm choosing to do this. So I am choosing to plow through and get things done, even though what I'd like to do is go back to bed and hide from the world today. Um, but I am going to choose to be helpful and productive. <laughs> oh God, thanks a lot. <laughs> so yesterday we did a law of the universe. Oh, right. The law of no judgments, of course. Yes. Um, as I was admitting to struggling a bit, you know, being angry and with, uh, the lady who, who, um, hit my mom who hit her in her car when my mom was on a motorcycle. And, um, you know, last night I really had to come to terms with that. I think that's one of the reasons why I couldn't fall asleep last night. Like, I really was so angry last night to the point of summoning Cali Ma energy. Um, so last night on my bed I did have an experience with Cali Ma energy. Um, it was brief, but it was definitely Cali Ma energy. And, um, so there was that, and then, you know, I had this awful daydream and, um, vision, I guess you'd call it, you know, where I was confronting this woman and, you know, just, you know, asking her, like, why didn't you even stop? What the hell is wrong with you? Screaming at this woman. And, um, in the vision, now, sensitive viewers, skip forward 30 seconds, um, in this vision, the woman pulled a gun on me and um, pointed it in my face, and I said, go ahead, then you can sit in jail where your ass belongs, right? And then in this vision that I was having, she then put it on herself and took her own life. Okay, so that was a terrible vision to have. Well, I needed to have it because in that moment then, I was her and she was my mom or something. Like there was this understanding on such a profound level for my own self that even if I wanted to yell at this woman, get up in her face, scream at her, ask her why, or like what the hell's wrong with her, right? That is attack. 
you know what I mean? And then, then to push someone to the edge like that, that is attack. And what happens? It comes right back on me, you know? So and then in that moment, I was that woman, you know? I was the, the one who was looking away. Like in the vision, I looked away. I wouldn't even look at her. And just like she, for whatever reason, could not get out of her vehicle and check on my mom. It was like this really profound thing, like, oh my God, this is how energy cycles around and comes right back to you. So it's like, I really was like, wow, I want to let go any feelings of animosity. I want to forgive her. Um, You know what I mean? I want to send compassion to her because can you imagine like, okay, I'm stuck on the idea of like what it's like to be my mom, but like nobody wants to hit anybody. They don't get in their vehicle and say, I hope I, I, I hit somebody, you know, like they don't wish that. So in her experience, it's traumatic. And you know what I mean? Like from her perspective, it's horrible. Like from every perspective, it's definitely horrible. Um, But it was like, it was a really good experience for me. Thank you, Callie Ma, for coming in, holding my hand, like taking me through my anger, taking me through my rage, holding my hand and letting me see something awful. Okay. That was awful for me to see just that potential and um, then come away with an understanding about it so I hope that you get where I was coming from but it was like wow so anyways I did not sleep well last night I really didn't because that took a while to process you know before I fell asleep it was probably like 3 in the morning and 7 a.m. comes pretty early and that was late for me to get up sorry chickens (laughs) do you feel my energy today holy god so yesterday was a lot of no judgments the universal spirit does not judge us so whatever we do here whatever we've done here the universal spirit does not judge us judgments are human inventions and we must understand that judgments attract judgment in equal measure so if i sit here judging this woman like wow what kind of character could she even have right like when i was in that moment of judgment i'm basically sending that out so it's going to be returned to me in equal measure you know what i mean it's like you're asking to be judged yourself like if i sit here hating her i'm asking for that hatred to be returned to me do i want hatred probably not (laughs) probably not um so the other thing that uh, the law of no judgments mentioned yesterday was that um our our end of life review like our life review at the end of this incarnation um, is just because of living in duality in 3d so in a sense we created that as well okay so today we're doing we're on our 61st law 61 laws you guys I'm so proud of you for hanging out with me and I'm so proud of me too dang so the one today is the law of non-attachment let me turn page make sure we only got one it's it's only a big half of a page paragraph not too bad take a drink settle down i'm drinking vanilla chamomile tea from celestial seasons wow big wow it's like delicious vanilla chamomile and I took my mother wart. I took B12 liquid, B complex liquid. Like I am definitely trying to get myself to just come out of the kind of anxiousness, like looming anxiousness. Like even when I did fall asleep, I woke up in a panic. I woke up in a panic a couple times. So I'm definitely, you know, maxing out on worrying. So then, you know, I worry about my mom and then it triggers into worrying about my kids. And then I worry about their dad and then I worry about my mom. like do you know what I mean like okay great we are fully worried now <laughs> and I didn't even read my course in miracles lesson yet today like I'm just a little bit off you know um so let me just open up my course in miracles app yesterday my lesson was God is the only goal I have today so I was just supposed to be thinking about God yesterday And today it is, let me remember what my purpose is. So that's a great one. Yeah, let me remember what my purpose is. 
So I will read that when I'm done, and then I'll go on YouTube and listen to Tina Louise Spaulding. She'll read it to me, and then she does a channeling to bring it. Her channelings afterwards bring the whole A Course in Miracles into life for me. If I didn't have her, I would have quit this shit. <laughs> so let me remember what my purpose is. And let me read The Law of Non-Attachment. So it says, attachment to the self creates karma. Non-attachment to the self dissolves karma. This non-attachment to the self is made possible through the realization that the ultimate nature of the self is empty. The self does not exist as a separate entity. A full conceptual understanding needs to occur, but mere conceptual understanding does not lead to liberation. Many methods have been devised to help human beings attain this realization and usually fall into two categories. The first is non-attached behavior and the other is called spiritual practice. Through diligent application of these methods, an individual can free him or herself from the confines of karmically determined existence. Enlightenment is real and attainable. All right, so enlightenment is real and attainable. Um, we got to get into non-attachment though, okay, because it's non-attachment that dissolves karma. And non-attachment means that you realize that the, the ultimate nature of yourself is empty. It doesn't exist by itself. Um, what else does it say? Um, I don't know. But it basically says that you can practice spiritual practice or non-attached behavior. So I would have to search up on the internet and see actually what that is. But I guess it's like, don't be attached to yourself. Don't be attached to outcomes. Maybe um, mindfulness, being in the present moment, right? Kind of like, I don't know, like give it up to God. Understand that um, you are part of God. I think that, you know, and then you get out of the idea that like you would, you know, if you, if you think like it's just you that exists, like you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do in eternity forever? Well, it's not just you. You are not a whole, whole, you don't exist as a separate entity. You are part of the whole. Um, you are part of the God mind. Um, so kind of like just understand, I guess it's a big idea, isn't it? Right? Especially the part, um, ultimate nature of self is empty. So I guess by meditating, emptying out your, your mind and your ego and just getting into that space that's just like, yeah, kind of emptiness, but it's calm, <laughs> you know, um, that's what you'd want to do to practice the law of non-attachment. Why would you want to practice the law of non-attachment? Because it dissolves karma. And then you can free yourself from the confines of karmically determined existence. And then I'm assuming then you can start creating, I don't know, or being, yeah, creating from a place that doesn't involve your karma. So that's that. Take it or leave it. The law of non-attachment. Sometimes just sitting with you and reading these laws, I, it does calm me down. Like it activates my inner narrator. It reminds me of my purpose. Like I would love to narrate books. <laughs> I don't like I I'm like not British enough to do that but um yeah they just want the British people narrating them books they sound so lovely um but uh yeah reading out loud really does calm me down sitting with you doing these podcasts so even though today I felt like total dog crap I was like yeah like I knew I still it was still my purpose to sit here with you today one because it serves me so well it really does um it really does it's part of my practice I guess of calming my mind down and then of course keep us all on track with these laws of the universe we're gonna be like masters of the world like and seriously 45 days or 44 days I'm sorry like 
I can't math right now. Well, there's 105 and we're on the 61st one. So you do the math. But like, yeah, like I'm just assuming like 100 and no, 44 more days. <laughs> wow. Now you see how smart I am. Not actually days in a row though, because I don't do weekends here. Um, but yeah, like by the end of the year, I think, or at least by New Year's, like we're going to be starting off the new year, 2020, as masters of the universe because we did these laws. Booyah. <laughs> okay, so the deck that I grabbed today is Power of Flowers. Why did I grab this deck? Because it is flower essences. I know we just worked with it like not too long ago, like last week, but... <laughs> I don't know, like when I opened up my drawer and I felt like how anxious I was, I was like, you know what? This is a day for flower essences. Flower essences. This is a day for rescue remedy. I don't have any, but um, if I did, I would be taking it because I have been taking my own basically like flower essence. It's not a flower essence. It's a tincture. It's full on vodka, but like... <laughs> Like, motherwort is with me today um, because, yeah, I was just like, what the hell, girl, settle down. Um, and uh, so I am. And uh, I thought, let's do the flower essences. They're beautiful archetypes. I connected with that Cali Ma energy last night. I never had done that before in, all, in, an, in that way. It was, like, authentic. I mean, I've thought about her. I've contemplated her. But I was actually connected to that energy um, in a powerful, like, body um, experience. And it wasn't, it didn't last that long, but it was intense. And I just send so many thanks to her, to that energy, to that mother, that fierce mother energy that just, oh, she just helped me. She held my, she held me and let me scream and, and, um, in my mind and uh yeah that was powerful that was a powerful clearing of energy for me so anyways I thought of course yeah of course we can do flower essences because that's the type of herbal but botanical therapy that helps people so much in situations like this from all angles you know and yeah, I mean, like, you can hold it together for a while. You can be the calm place, you know, hold space for people, offer peace, offer groundedness. But if you're human, at some point, you're going to need to process the other emotions. And so <sighs> that's what botanicals let us do, too, you know? Like, they give us a space to do that they hold our hands and if it's too much they help calm us down that's why I'm doing the mother wart like okay my heart is just racing too much with worrying and um yeah so anyways I okay so one card did fall out and it's laying on the side of my leg but I, I can't see it yet but it's there we got our first card but I just want to tell you that I posted on my Facebook page and tagged my mom so it went on hers. And the response was incredible. I mean, like within an hour, so many people like responded, sent prayers, um, sent love, sent healing. Um, you know what? Let me just, since I'm so interactive with my phone apparently, on this podcast let me just tell you um okay so I posted it yesterday at 5 52 it has 110 likes or responses there's 193 comments and 17 people shared the post um letting people know about you know what happened and um you know that deserves thinking about her and sending her prayers and sending her healing energy and you know s sending her Reiki we have Reiki coming towards her um, just incredible so many people stepped up and said what can I do to help is there anything I can do um, like I've never posted anything anywhere and gotten that kind of response like that so shout out to my mother's friends and a few of my own 
um, but mostly my mom's friends. You, what an incredible um, response and uh, powerful surge and offering of energy. Like my mom felt it. My mom was blown away. And um, yeah, she was like, with all this healing energy, I should be good to go. You know, like my mom's sense of humor has remained intact this whole time. Thank goddess. And, um, and I made her laugh too. Cause I was like, yeah, with all this energy, you might want to, you might try to break out in the middle of the night, you know, just envisioning her trying to escape the hospital. And that offered us a really good laugh. Um, you know, just to kind of put it all into a humorous perspective and just, you know, humor does help you release and kind of let things go. And of course my mother's not going to break out of the hospital. She can barely get out of bed without being so dizzy. Um, cause she got, had a concussion and it's like, you know, but at least we could laugh about it in that one moment. So let's see what card flew out of the deck for us today it is unbelievable I'm gonna cry <laughs> it's Callie it's Callie Ma with black cohosh So every once in a while, my cards really impress me. And this is definitely one of those moments. The card that flew out is Black Cohosh, and the archetype on the card is Kali Ma, the goddess of destruction. If I ever doubt the magic, remind me of this moment. If I ever doubt the magic that we are able to tap into, remind me of this moment. <laughs> this literally takes the cake. I have tears. I'm completely blown away. <laughs> so I kid you not, I connected with Callie Ma last night and she's here again. <laughs> and I'm acting like a total wuss. Like, I mean, she is so incredible and she's telling me, so are you. She's telling me so is your mom. And we are protected. So Kali is also known as Shakti or Kali Ma. She is the embodiment of pure female energy. For she is the deepest void or womb where all is born, must die, and be born again. You know what? <clears throat> I'm going to blow my nose and get a drink. I'll be right back. <sighs> All right. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible that I'm sitting here looking at Callie Ma after I went ahead and told you that told you about that. Now, my experience last night could have been one of those ones that I kept to myself. Do you know what I mean? Because who's going to believe you when you say, I connected with Kali Ma energy? <laughs> you know, like they're like, okay. And you're like, no, I really felt like I did. Like I really did. Um, so, but I did. I told you about that. And then here she is again um, as a confirmation. Um, and even the other day, someone was wearing um, a t shirt with a artwork of Callie Ma and I said, Oh hey Callie and then I told them I work with her sometimes. Like just kind of like because I know she's on my cards and I think of her sometimes, you know, but I kind of was like 
you know, like after I said, like I work with her, like I was like, yeah, you wish, <laughs> you know, like in my head, my ego was like, yeah, you wish. And then I really actually did work with her last night and now I'm still working with her. I feel her here. It's more gentle today. So in this, but powerful. So in this image, she has four arms and her two lower arms are just loosely embracing the black cohosh white pillars of flowers in the picture. Like black cohosh has these pointy unicorn horn flowers. And um, she just has her arms around them, like not holding tight, just loosing, holding space. And that's how it feels to me right now. Like I feel that energy around my shoulders loosely, but there's space there. There's space there for me to put my shoulders back. You know, she's not like crushing me. She's, it's a space. And she just encouraged me to put on some myrrh essential oil, which I did. So in this image, she's beautiful. Her other two arms are up, um, you know, raised above her head a little bit. One's in a fist and one's holding a sword. And a rainbow is coming up and out of the sword into the sky. And her feet, you know, like are, she's really goddess. Her feet, you know, one's in front of the other kind of pointed and like ballet, you know. Um, and the cohosh is wrapping around her a little bit. And there's two big cohosh leaves on the sides of her and she's standing solidly on the co black cohosh root. And the whole thing is like floating in the sky. <clears throat> so it's almost kind of like she's coming in on this black cohosh magic carpet, if you will, like a flying black cohosh saucer, you know? And she's just coming in <clears throat> and she's, Sometimes you see pictures of her and she's like raging, you know what I mean? Tongue out, eyes flaming. You, there's no, I don't even see any um, like skull necklaces in this picture. Like this, she's wearing like a beautiful yellow top. Um, you can see her belly. Her pants are yellow and flowing. She's got gold anklets. On. she's got gold bracelets on I mean she's powerful and her face is calm and nurturing and looking off to the right side like off and downward so she sees where she's going she's loving in this picture she's loving all the time even in her destruction that's what makes Callie Ma so interesting because like sometimes she's depicted as really scary and um, yeah, at the same time, she's mother energy. She's loving. She's pure female energy for she is the deepest void or womb where all is born, must die and be born again. So this says most commonly depicted as a black warrior goddess with striking features. Callie is a fierce protector of the universe. Her task is to strip away and devour all obstructions and hindrances. Hence, she is typically associated with the imagery of transmutation, including swords, snakes, and skulls. In contrast to this fearful imagery, two of her arms reach out to bless and acknowledge her many fervent devotees, as well as to renew the seed of possible enlightenment for humanity. So what did our law of the universe say? The last sentence of the law, what's our law today of non-attachment? The last sentence said, enlightenment is real and attainable. And here it says again, to renew the seed of possible enlightenment for humanity. So it is possible, it is attainable, it is real. And um, yeah, that's why her two arms are gently, you know, they're outward to bless and acknowledge um, her devotees and renew the seed of possible enlightenment for humanity. And that's truly what she did for me last night too. 
you know, you know, yeah. And one of the many things that she helped me with, me with last night, it was, yeah, like you are going to be able to stay on your path always, always. Enlightenment is attainable. So as we look at this card, Callie stands victorious amidst the rooted entanglements of despair. White flowers blossom around her, symbolizing the peace and tranquility that inevitably arise after her raging storm. And that is exactly what happened to me last night. She raged, she allowed me to rage, and she came in and helped me rage more. Like, she was like, oh, we're getting this out. That's what it felt like. So, like, when I, like, screamed in my, um, in my mind, like, it was this complex arrangement of visions that I was having. But at one point, I, like, just, like, as you would, like, just full out, like, scream like you never did, tongue out, like just beast mode. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like the best energetic purge in that vision that I'd ever had, like as far as like get it out right now. And it was let people feel it, you know what I mean? But it was like, it's, it's leaving you now. And then, yeah, after that raging storm, what, what came back in on the inhale was peace. So a rainbow encircles Callie's sword while her arms offer a kind blessing. Remember, out of your deepest, darkest fears, a new cycle of evolution beckons. So out of your deepest, darkest fears, a new cycle of evolution beckons. Your path to enlightenment is secure. Mother Callie protects you along the way. Whew. So this is so powerful to me. I hope you're enjoying my wow moment. Big wow. Big wow. Big wow. And she kind of like, like I just felt like she pushed up on my spine to make me sit up straighter and put my shoulders back with this message like, and start to expect it as the normal. And start to expect it as the normal. So let's just talk about black cohosh a bit cause like, you know, let's see what it has to offer as a flower essence. Um, black cohosh is an Indian word. Cohosh is an Indian word for rough and black. No, the cohosh is an Indian word for rough and black referring to the plant's gnarled and knotty roots, which extend deep into the ground. In contrast, its white flowers pike upward toward the light. So it is so interesting that the roots are black, the flowers are white. Also known as black root, rattle root, squaw root, <clears throat> black cohosh is a summer plant found in shady woods as well as on their periphery. So the flower essence, this plant has powerful healing properties symbolized by its pure white flowers, which embody the power of transformation as they blossom out of dark and tangled roots under the crust of the earth. So the roots are tangly and black and what comes out of it? but pure light, right? The power of transformation. We can go into our darkness and come out holding the light. So black cohosh is, is usually considered a woman's plant. That's when you'll hear it. It's, it's, it's a woman's plant for its estrogen-like qualities, which soothe menstrual cramps and assist in childbirth. Black Cohosh Elixir fosters transformations and helps one find inner resources. It helps you find your inner resources, such as courage and strength for overcoming addictive patterns and emotional dependencies 
which can undermine self-confidence. True liberation may follow as the soul gives rise to the luminous purity of the essential divine self reborn. Wow. So, <clears throat> yeah, between Black Cohosh and Kali Ma, it it does take you into your darkness maybe, it and but it leaves you stronger, more confident, more full of light, more just able to rise to your luminous purity of your essential divine self, you know, with and that, you know, just incredible, just incredible. So, oh, wow. <laughs> Are you ready for the blessing? Um, the blessing from Black Kohash and Kali Ma here for us today. Of course, we feel the protection and we feel the assistance. And uh, yeah, I feel like before I read it, I just feel like it's the message is she's saying like, don't be afraid to go into those dark places. Like you need to. You have to, and I'm going to take you there. <laughs> like We're going. We're going to go there um, because you don't want to leave anything untransformed at this time. You really want to do your transformation work. You really do. So here's the blessing. Black cohosh with gnarly roots Offering flowers of tender white shoots, Kali Ma reveals her sword, breaking the ties, cutting the cords. All my demons are eternally free. Black Kohosh, you transform me. So I just thought to myself, I wonder if we should do the top and bottom card because this one flew out. And so I grabbed the deck and looked on the bottom as my dogs are going to be dogs. And it's Mother Mary on the bottom. So yes, of course. Honest to dog. <laughs> like they're always interrupting my, broad or my broadcast and my podcast. They're always just being dogs all the damn time. They're... They're always jumping on you. All right. So anyways, yes, on the bottom is Mother Mary with Rose. So I feel like, yes, of course, we have to honor this. And that means I have to honor the top card too, which is Hibiscus. And so, okay, that is amazing too, because that is Pele, the volcano goddess, right? So she's kind of coming upward. Um, like if Callie's rainbow is kind of like shooting, arcing as rainbows do, it's going into this fiery energy of the volcano. And, oh yeah, I didn't notice this at first, but Mother Mary has a rainbow that goes the whole way over around her. So that is so sweet. That is really so sweet. Then we had hibiscus on the top, and Mother Mary on the bottom of the deck with Callie Ma. All right, so, um, so sweet because I work with Mother Mary. I do. I've worked with her for a long time. Um, and oh my gosh, I'm getting tingles all over my arms because she's saying to me, and you think we've only, we've worked together, but now we're really going to work together. Now we're really going to connect, you know, because a lot of times it's like you just think in your head, like, was that for real? Did I really work with them? Now it's going to be more visceral. That's what I'm feeling. Now you're not going to think that you're crazy, like ever. Like you're going to actually say, like, I work with Mother Mary and I work with Callie Ma and I really actually do, like, because I feel it in my body. I feel it in my heart. I know it in my mind. Um, so yes, all this intense energy. So let's, so that Mother Mary makes sense to me. So I want to end with her, but what about hibiscus? Because, um, I never have gone around saying that I work with Pele cause I wasn't even sure if that's how you said her name, <laughs> but I feel like she's coming in as an assistant, um, to transformation work with 
Callie Ma. Like, Callie Ma wants to cut cords and, um, you know, cut ties, release things. And, um, you know, it's like, okay, so we've cut the cord for you. Now, can you let it go, right? If there's like a toxic person in your life, like, okay, bam, you ask us to cut the cord. We did. Now, can you let them go? Can you let it go? So let's see what hibiscus has for us, you know, because um, black cohosh took us down into our darkness. It's going to help us transform, be a new, new um, essence, more into our divine essence. I'm just going to jump right into the healing message about the hibiscus flower. And I have some here that need to be made into tea. Um, the hibiscus flower comes to you today as a flaming chalice, inviting you to live your truest passions. The fires of Pele give rise to dancing flames of swirling intensity, leaping toward the heavens. The movement of the flames guides us, showing the way to liberation. Hayaka, which um, is a little sister, Hayaka's beautiful dance reveals the physical embodiment of Pele's fire, reminding you that you must ground this energy in your body. So it's like, okay, so all this energy that we can work with, we can work with our guides, we can work with the um, energy of the elements, and just yesterday in my besties um, broadcast, Osceola Oracle, we were working with the elements and I felt very connected to the fire element yesterday. Like I even did fire emojis, he can vouch for me. And um, one of the cards that he pulled for me was, yeah, there was fire in it. Cause he was like, what do you see in there? And I was like, I see the fire, you know? Um, so yeah, there was this fire connection energy. So I feel like this is totally re related with Pele. But anyways, we've got all this energy that we can work with. Like, like I can tap into the energy of Mother Mary, but um, what I have to do to, to make it real is to embody it, to ground the energy in my body. So Kali Ma can come through me, um, but what I need to do is put it into my body, ground it into my body, ground it into the earth, and you know, that is a message for the collective right now too, to get into your bodies, to get into your bodies. And even like, you know, like my mom, like the best thing she can do right now is actually get into her body. Um, of course, you know, like when you're in pain, you want to get out of your body, you want to take medication, you want to, you know, ease up that suffering a bit, but it is so beneficial to feel as much as you can feel. Um, and to, to just be the ownership of that vessel in this time, you know. So yeah, get into your bodies, feel your bodies, feel that energy, feel that power, ground it, ground the energy into the body. Um, so the flower essence though of hibiscus, it's a tropical flower. Hibiscus comes from, it's in Asia and subtropical regions. It's, it blossoms all year round. It has new buds appearing each morning, followed by red or purplish blossoms lasting only a day or two. And um, it says the reproductive organs of the hibiscus flower protrude conspicu conspicuously from the center of its five flaring petals. So yeah, it has this like phallic stamen um, like coming up from the center of the flower and there's five petals. Five is the number of change, okay? So I love it. And I love that like, you know, a flower like that is totally at ease um, with itself. So tropical flowers make very potent essences as when we're talking about flower essences because they are infused with the sun and rainbow colored air, both of which amplify Davic soul consciousness. Hibiscus essences energizes the first and second chakras, undoing blockages in the lower back, 
and spine and reproductive glands. <clears throat> Hibiscus is also very good essence for dancers. So I have definitely had blockages in my lower back and my lower chakras, um, in my hips. Um, and so it's just coming in to help, like, I can see her. She's a Hawaiian dancer. There's movement in her skirt, her grass skirt. She's got a lei around her neck, a flower lei. And yeah, she's saying like, move those hips, you know, like rock them, open that up. Let this, this um, swirling energy that I see on the card, you know, come into your hip space and put it out. And just like a wave kind of has movement and a bird can fly and the wind can blow and the sun can shine. Let that energy come through you and out of you and clear those blockages in the lower chakras and um, energize, energize you um, and get yourself into your body. So I'm getting text messages for from my mom. I see that she's going to be definitely staying another night in the hospital, so I'll check in with her. Um, let's just feel our blessing right now from Hibiscus and from um, Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of fire. That's what we're looking at here on this card. She's interwoven with the threads of lovely stories and songs and dances involving her little sister, Hayaka. Hayaka. Um, Hayaka. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to answer the phone here. <laughs> well, my surroundings are definitely waking up legit. Text messages, phone calls, my girls are awake, the dogs are here. But you know what? I want the blessing from Red Hibiscus. I want the blessing from Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of fire, and her little sister. Hayaka. So, here's the blessing. Red hibiscus, I greet your flame. Hayaka, I call your name. Teach me your sacred song and dance. My soul full of passion, you enhance. So, because this is such a personal reading, you know, and there's messages, going to be messages for you too. But personally, um, I have to start dancing the way my soul wants to. Do you know what I mean? Like just feeling the music, feeling the energy, pulling it into my body, grounding it into my body, and really letting it circulate and um, serve me. There's so much energy in dancing. Um, sometimes it's gentle dancing. Sometimes it's just a swaying, sometimes it's powerful, sometimes it's Cali Ma. <laughs> sometimes the dance is Cali Ma, and she's very fluid too in her movement on this card. Now, the only one who's not fluid right now is Mother Mary, but she is grounded. She is sitting on the grass um, with these tiny little flowers in front of her, a, a huge pink rose to the left, a huge yellow rose to the right, and of course there is that rainbow arcing above her. Now on the top of the roses are these beautiful cherub looking children. And you know what I see in the background? There's a mountain in the background of her and it looks like a white, it looks like a willow tree by a stream. And you, I, you would not see that with your like I did not see that I had to get very close to the card because this artwork is very small kind of but I am so connected to the willow tree this year too um, amazing so let's tell my dog to quit growling and um, read a little bit about the rose and see what um, Mother Mary has to say to us so I'm telling my children to be quiet, but what's funny about that is this card talks about Rudolf Steiner, which is the the creator of the Waldorf education, which completely 100% honors the child. <laughs> so the irony in that moment, I can't be telling, I actually can't even tell my children to be quiet right now because Rudolf Steiner energy is in this card 
Um, that's why there's the two children. So he offered a really unique perspective of the birth of Christ, suggesting that Mary, in fact, gave birth to, to twin souls. Um, when she gave birth to him, she gave birth to twin souls. One, the yellow rose, dedicated to the path of truth. And the other, the pink rose, dedicated to the path of the heart. So the path of the heart and the path of truth the twin souls that in fact was Jesus. So in this way, according to Steiner, Mary offered the world the forces of both universal truth and universal love. So regardless of how you feel about that story, I mean, I have a different perspective of Jesus now that I've been hanging out with Tina Louise Spalding because she channels that energy and, um, you know, his message too is that you know he listened to his spiritual guides and enlightenment is possible for everyone so there's definitely that message today enlightenment is possible for everyone and how do we walk that well we walk the path of truth and we walk the path of love of the heart so in choosing this card today mother mary comes in um, we are greeted by the rose goddess gently announcing your readiness to accept the twin gifts of cosmic love and wisdom embodied by the mystic rose and on mary's heart chakra she has a rose on her red dress and um, it is lit up and she has a beautiful blue veil cape around her and behind her is you know enlightened the golden halo the golden sun behind her and it's just incredible and even actually up in the rainbow which i didn't notice before either there is a rose in the rainbow and two rosebuds on either side like the artwork is incredible i wish it was bigger like i wish like they would have done a full card print instead of just having like such a border around the cards like it looks good but these are definitely images that could be a little bit bigger. Just saying. <laughs> so the Rose family, I've also of course been connected to roses. Um, the one office that I clean at has these three or four incredible tiny rose bushes, but incredible. They're like ever blooming roses or something and they smell so good. And they have literally been in perpetual bloom all summer long and they're like cluster chunks of roses little roses and you know as one one is dying there's new buds on each one it's probably a hybrid it's probably just a you know something was manipulated with this and good job <laughs> um it is incredible so anyways yeah and my daughter has just chimed in we have rose deodorant from i think tom's of maine which is awesome. So get yourself some. They sell it at Wally World. So the rose family includes many species species of five petaled flowers. So also to be noted, the hibiscus also had five petals. Roses are in the shape of pentagrams or five pointed stars, which offer humanity a beautiful symbol of cosmic love accessible through the human heart. The plant is deeply rooted and very tenacious and is able to surmount great obstacles such as extreme weather conditions. So another message there with its deep roots um, to get grounded. Black cohosh, those black entangled roots, get grounded, dive deep, go into your darkness, hold steady, weather the storm. Hibiscus said to ground that fire energy into your body so a big message to ground 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 the rose flower essence is one of the purest vibrations in existence whatever its colors or species it always invokes the most profound manifestations of love accomplishing this through a gentle stimulation of the heart chakra located at the center of the human body so yeah just even the smell of roses 
gently stimulates and activates your heart chakra. It brings in that pure essence, that pure energy, that pure frequency of love. And so yes, Mother Mary always has a rose with her. She is the mother of the world, the queen of heaven. She is the mystical core of Christianity. The Virgin Mary is revealed as a goddess who embodies the immaculate mystery of birth and is the source of all that is sacred. Mary, the moon, gives birth to the light of the world in the form of the cosmic child. This book says, sadly, our culture has lost its connection to this deeper mythology of the queen of heaven. But in a lot of ways in my life, she comes through, um, you know, in just such um, a relatable energy and um, so kind, so loving, unconditionally loving, supportive, nurturing, um, directive, and just sweet, so sweet. So we'll end today with the blessing of the rose from, <laughs> from the queen of heaven, the mother of, of the world. Holy rose, queen of love, your beauty is divine. Sacred is your tenderness, jewel of nature, sweet and kind. Dang, so I told you she was sweet, sweet and kind, absolutely. So what an amazing broadcast with Mother Mary, Pele, and Callie Ma. Thank you so much to Black Cohosh, Hibiscus, and Rose, taking me on this journey into diving deeper into the entanglement, but into a place of grounding that energy and returning with the blessings, returning with the light. The path of enlightenment is a potential for everyone. Enlightenment is a possibility. How do we do that? We walk, we dedicate ourselves to the path of truth and the path of the heart. So on that note, all these rainbows today, all this fire, all this kind of cutting cords and destruction, like think of the destruction of a volcano, but sometimes that is what needs to happen for the earth, for the land, for the release, and for the expression of truth and love. So, so much love to you today. Thank you for sharing your energy. Thank you for coming here today with me to see this amazing experience I had today. Let us dance today. Let us let that energy flow and let us allow our hearts to be open because in that open heart space, we are able to journey wherever it is that we need to journey and do the energy work necessary for the non-attachment journey into enlightenment. So on that note, remember enlightenment is real and attainable and you are on the path. <laughs>